Evening everyone, welcome to the next of our Sunday evening sharing our lives videos. I hope this finds you well wherever you're watching along this evening. Over the summer months we've been uh, recording a series of interviews uh, just where uh, various folk connected to our church or in our church family are sharing about, about their lives and how they came to know Jesus and what their relationship with God means to them. This morning at Great Vic uh, we had Davy Ellison preaching for us. Uh, he's a good friend to us at Great Vic and so I thought it'd be nice to hear a bit more about his life this evening in our video series. So as Davy uh, shares, who is the uh, director for training at the Irish Bible College, the Baptist College, um, I hope you'll enjoy this and be encouraged with what he has to share. And as always, if there's anything that speaks to you in a particular way, don't be afraid to follow up with us, send us an email and connect. We'd love to just follow up with you and encourage you. So enjoy the video and then enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless. Okay, Davey, thank you so much for being willing to be part of this little Sharing Our Lives series. Um, I just want to start off by asking you to tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do, who is Davey Ellison? Yeah, no worries. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share with you and, uh, uh, and chat with you. Um, so my name is Davey Ellison. Um, some in the church will know me, um, some won't. Um, I did a student placement in Great Vic uh, eight years ago now, believe it or not. Um, so that was a while ago. Um, so my name is Davey Ellison, I'm married to Tracy, and we've been married for 10 years now, um, just in May past. Um, at present, living in Antrim, um, we are members of Antrim Baptist Church, and I serve as an elder there in Antrim Baptist uh, as well. Uh, I'm also employed as the Director of Training for the Irish Baptist College, um, which is a grand title for someone who does a lot of different things um, in the college. Um, and that's uh, what's been occupying me um, kind of during my work time um, from November in 2019. So, so less than a year, and it's been quite a first year um, in the role, given all that's uh, happened with uh, coronavirus and lockdown and all of those bits and pieces. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a brief intro to me. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's quite a, a, a road, a journey that has led you to the place you're in today. And, and I guess one of the first steps of that is that you, self, you, you yourself, you've come to know Jesus. So can you maybe share us with us a little bit of your story? How did you come to know Jesus and uh, to put your hope in him? Yeah, um, well, I was brought up in a family that um, always went to church. So I was brought up going to church um, Sunday services, children's meetings, um, good news clubs, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, sent along to BB faithfully uh, as well. Um, sent along to the Boys Brigade in Elmwood Presbyterian Church in Lisbon there. So that's, uh, we, we didn't quite cross paths, but we at least have that in common, Steve, um, that we've, we've been connected to that church. Um, so brought up, brought up hearing about God, um, memorizing verses, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, having a wee Bible where we stickers in the inside cover, Jesus loves you, God cares for you, all of that. So I kind of, on a head level, knew all of that, had some kind of thought process uh, about all of that. Um, I wasn't converted, I wasn't regenerate, um, but I kind of felt like God looked after me in some way. Um, and that was my childhood, until I was about 12 or 13, um, and then my parents divorced. Um, and that, that shook my world. Uh, I wondered why a God who cares for me uh, and Jesus who loves me, why that would be permitted to happen in my life. You know, why, why my parents would divorce, why I'd no longer get to live in the same house as my father, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and as a result, I became really angry at God. Um, I blamed him for all of that. I uh, blamed him for the pain I was experiencing. Uh, and as a result, rebelled. Um, so avoided church, didn't want to be there. Um, tried to keep my distance and then kind of engaged in all of the things that teenagers engage in to, to rebel uh, and to, I suppose, in some way, try to find something to dull the pain um, of that experience. Um, so that was my teenage years. Uh, I should say at that point, um, it's kind of connected to the divorce. And um, we, we moved from Lisbon to Carrickfergus. Um, and when we moved there, uh, I was kind of pushed towards Carrick Baptist. Um, Good group of young people there managed to make some friends with people was involved a little bit on the fringes of the yf and that kind of stuff um and it was through that connection um i, I heard that 
they were sending a, a young person's team to Peru to visit some Baptist missions, missionaries in Peru. So a group of the YF were going there. And uh, twigged in my head, I want to go. Um, no interest in mission at that point. No interest in serving God. Um, I saw it as a cheap way to see the other side of the world. <laughs> and uh, having grown up in church, I kind of knew the right things to say to get me a seat on the plane. Um, and so I probably thought I was pulling the wool over people's eyes. And uh, what was actually happening was God was orchestrating things um, to speak into my life. Um, and so that was the summer of 2006. I was aged 18, just finished my A-levels. And uh, that summer, uh, don't have a date, don't have a day, um, but God changed me. Um, primarily in that experience in Peru, so convicted by the lives of the missionaries working there and with Baptist Mission, so convicted by the lives of the Peruvian believers as well. And just how little they had, how much they gave up for the gospel. Um, and I kind of felt guilty at the upbringing I'd had of being in such close contact with the gospel and with Christian community, um, and yet neglecting that and spurning that gift. Um, and that, that's what twigged in my head. God was at work. And um, yeah, before that summer, um, I partying in inappropriate relationships. Uh, end of that summer, all of that had stopped. And uh, Lots of people are kind of safe during school and then go a bit wild in uni. <laughs> and I was the other way around. I was a bit wild in school. Uh, God converted me and then um, uni was a different story for me. Uh, and so after that, I came home, uh, got plugged into the church in Carrick, and became, was baptized, became a member, got involved in ministry. Um, and then that really started a, a long journey um, to where I am now uh, in ministry in the college. Um, so that's, yeah, that's how God worked in my life. Um, obviously, a lot more detail can be added there, but that's kind of the broad sweep yeah. of that. Wonderful. Thanks, David. Um, it's wonderful to hear your, your, your journey. And, and as you say, you thought you were pulling the wool over people's eyes, and yet there was God at work orchestrating things behind the scenes. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and I, I think that's one of the things that, one of the things that I've kind of twigged with me in lockdown and kind of the the power that we think we have as humans and the control we think we exert over our circumstances. Uh, and that's the delusion I was in at that point. Uh, and yet God is sovereign, orchestrating things for his plans and purposes, for his glory and for the good of his people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that my conversion continually reminds me of that, um, that God is so much bigger and wiser than I am yeah. and at work. Um, I'm going to just quickly insert another wee question, Davy, if that's okay, that we, you know, hadn't uh, given you a heads up on. Go um, for it. Because clearly, you know, you've, you've come to know Jesus, got plugged into Carrick, and now here you are, the, you know, the training director at the Irish Baptist College. Why, you know, why have you given your life to, to training, teaching God's word? Uh, why, why go all that way, commit to this kind of role you're in now? Yeah, um, yeah, interesting question. Short answer, I'll give you a short answer and then I'll give you a slightly longer answer, but not too long. Um, the short answer is that I, that I developed a desire for, for teaching the scriptures um, to communicating that with others. Um, in developing that desire, opportunities were given and those opportunities seemed to evidence that there was gifting there in that um, from what how I felt it went and how other people then fed back to me. So th those kind of three things are really what orchestrated the pathway in the ministry and the desire to do it and um, the opportunity to do it and then the, the confirmation of gifting um, yeah. to some degree. So, so I went to university, went to Queens, uh, studied geography with the hope of teaching and that was the plan. Um, and obviously that had been or organized prior to my conversion um, over the summertime. While at university studying geography, involved in the church, as I was involved in the church, became a deacon, led a youth ministry, uh, and those kind of opportunities confirmed in me. Opportunity then to speak at YF and at prayer meetings and on a Sunday eventually as well. Um, so I, w I wanted to do that. Um, I did want to drop out of geography and go straight to Bible college. And some people give me wise advice not to do that. Uh, so I completed my geography degree and um, had a bit of a gap year after that, where I worked a couple of different jobs and observed some ministry um, elsewhere uh, and then started college in September, 2010. And my aim was 
go to the preparation for ministry course, come out the other end, pastor a church, and do that for the rest of my life. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so I did the course, uh, graduated, had a great experience in Great Vic, um, also worked for Carrie Duff Baptist for a year during my degree as well as youth worker first year. So great experiences in the local church and came out the other side of college and was just preaching around, waiting for a call, and uh, it didn't materialize. Um, now, when it didn't materialize, it was suggested that I keep studying, um, make use of the time, keep preaching around, do a bit of part, part-time study. So I did, did a master's degree part-time at that time. Um, performed much better in my degree, in my master's degree, than I'd ever performed academically prior to that. Um, and so the, nothing continued to open up. I worked for Baptist Youth for a while, and the transition between directors kind of kept that ticking over. Uh, finished the master's degree, and it was suggested, look, you're doing well. Why not keep going? Um, start a doctorate. Uh, so started that part-time um, four years ago now. And um, having done all of that, then got the opportunity to teach uh, lecturing in college, doing evening classes. And the same thing happened. There was a desire growing there, an enjoyment of studying, and opportunity then to put that studying into practice, teaching, uh, and in the the confirmation that there seemed to be some gifting there uh, and then the job with college came up so that was uh it was a tough decision uh, i was working as associate pastor in andron baptist at the time um had been there for two and a half years whenever the post came up it was suggested to me that i think about it uh initially said no um i'm only here two and a half years and andron want to stay here a bit longer continue in ministry um wrestled with that eventually it kind of seemed talking to others that god was definitely leading me towards um, academics ministry in a sense um, we do a university degree at college but it's also preparing people for ministry um, and so the opportunity to stay as an elder in Antrim and to join uh, the college staff and uh, was was a great opportunity and such a privilege um, not just to be able to shepherd a congregation as an elder but to also have the opportunity to shape and shepherd future shepherds and missionaries and those who will be walk, working in gospel service in a variety of different ways. Um, great privilege. So another long winding road that God's kind of yeah. led me along. Again, not what I wanted or expected to be doing, um, yet God opened some doors and closed other doors, and yeah. that's what brought me to this stage. Wonderful. Well, we'll go back to the script now then, and uh, I'll ask, <laughs> ask my final question. Uh, each week in these videos, we've been just asking in this last question, if, if there's something particularly precious about your relationship with God, about your understanding of God and the gospel, if there's something along the way that you have just come to say, yeah, if, if I was asked what is particularly precious to me about my relationship with God or the gospel or whatever uh, you'd like to speak to, what kind of thing comes to your mind, Davey, uh, when you ask that? Yeah, um, every time you ask me that question, you'll probably get a different answer <laughs> because I'm always always thinking about something different and um, something new. I've shared some of those things about God's sovereignty in my life, um, turning painful situations into glorious situations. And I remember the night of my baptism, um, just recognizing what God had done and turning around painful decision of or painful experience of divorce in the family, moving from all my friends and school to this new situation and mm -hmm. how much I hated that and what God had done. Um, but the thing I would share um, today is just a little bit of a reflection on, on lockdown. Um, I was sharing with the, the church in Antrim, um, one of the prayer meetings, just about how much christ has given up for us uh, and i think lockdowns helped me appreciate that just a little bit more um kind of thought about lockdown and everything that's been taken from us um granted not a whole lot of freedoms but some freedoms have been taken from us there are things we have lost um some people have lost more than others um, but we've all lost something uh, and it's been taken from us and uh as I reflected on that, I reflected on the well-known passage from Philippians 2 and just Christ's humility uh, and how he gave up those things for us. Um, his glory in heaven, being humble, taking the form of a servant and being obedient even to death. And, and this idea of all of the freedoms and the powers and the 
the glory that Christ gave up in taking on flesh with the sole purpose of accomplishing his people's salvation. Um, and I suppose just the experience of lockdown and even just minor freedoms, not being able to go see your family when you want, um, having to put a mask on to go inside Tesco, little things that irritate us, exasperate us, uh, and yet are nothing compared to what Christ has done for us. Um, I think that's something that, that I've been thinking about. We've been doing a summer reading group um, in church as well. We've been reading uh, John Piper's Seeing and Savoring Jesus Christ, lots of little meditations on different aspects of Christ and what he has done, who he is for us. Um, and so I think just at the minute, that's what's precious in my mind as I think about everything that Christ gave up to, to rescue me, uh, to ransom me, uh, to make me his, uh, part of his people. and. Uh, I think just sometimes there's wee windows in life and you, you get a little bit of a flavor of, of how great that salvation is. Um, we're told in Hebrews not to neglect that. And uh, we are too prone to neglecting that, taking it for granted, being familiar with it. Um, so it's a little bit rambling. I appreciate that. But that kind of idea um, of all that Christ willingly gave up to secure us as his people and through his death on the cross um, has been something that's just been weighing on me recently is that I've thought about our experience in lockdown and read the scriptures and meditated on who Christ is for us. Um, that's been something that, that's been, um, yeah, in my, my heart and my mind. Yeah, that's wonderful. No, thanks for sharing that. You know, I think uh, straight away of John 13 and Jesus washing his disciples' feet and mm. willingly going low so that yeah. we exalted willingly going through as you say the the relinquishing of all of that uh, wonderful glory in heaven uh, that the, the not considering equality with god something to be grasped but making himself nothing for us and for sure uh, yeah that's wonderful no thanks so much davy um thank you for taking the time uh, just this uh, today to uh, share a little bit of your life with us. We really appreciate that. And, uh, and I trust this will be an encouragement and help to those who've been listening in. No problem. Thank you again for the opportunity and uh, great to share with you. Thanks.